Today we're going to be talking about rates of change and tangent lines. And today really lays the groundwork for a lot of what we're going to be doing over the next really semester. So average rate of change. Suppose I have some function and I'm just going to make up a, any old function I want. And let's call that function y equals f of x over an interval. So the average rate of change of f of x over an interval, and our intervals are x values of a to b. So I have some x value that's a, another x value that's b. The average rate of change of that is essentially the slope of the line that goes through those two points. So it's the slope of what we call the secant line. Now remember, a secant line is a line that goes through two points. I mean, yeah, technically, according to our graph, it goes through three, but this is the slope of the line through the two endpoints of our interval. So that's going to be the function evaluated at B minus our function evaluated at A all over B minus A. So find the average rate of the change of the function over the interval. So find F of 1 which is 1, find f of 2, which is 8. So the average rate of change, subtract the y values, subtract the x values, you're finding slope. So that's 7. So if I were to look at the graph of y equals x cubed, y equals x cubed, the function that looks like that. What we just found is we found the slope of the line this slope of that line. Okay, now average rate of change when we're talking about trigonometry. So we find f of pi over 2 Function evaluated pi over 2, 1. f of pi over 4, root 2 over 2. So then from here, we do our algebra. And you can go anyway. So I'm going to do root 2 over 2 minus 1 all over pi over 4 minus pi over 2. This would work out the same way if I were to switch those values. 1, instead of having 1 there, I'm going to change that to our common denominator of 2 over 2. And then I'm going to change the pi over 2. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 to get our common denominator. So now I have root 2 minus 2 all over 2 divided by negative pi over 4. So then I have root 2 minus 2 over 2 times by the reciprocal of the bottom. So I have 2 root 2 minus 4 all over pi. And I have a negative in there. I forgot my negative. So that would change that to minus and a plus. Now tangent to a curve. And this is super important. Let me highlight one thing we have here. So say we have a secant line. So line that goes through two points, 
where in blue we have our function. So our function is in blue. It's this function right here. Now, another way to think of a secant line is if I go over a certain h unit, so from some x value to some h value, I add that h value to my x value and I go over that certain amount, the y distance is going to be f of x, obviously, because I'm evaluating my function at x, and then whatever our x plus h is. So the slope of the secant line would be this. But what I want is I want a tangent line. A tangent line, this h would get really, really small. So that's where the limits that we've been talking about have come into play. So they limit as h goes to 0 of our function evaluated at x plus h minus f of x all over h. And so as h gets really, really small, what happens is this point here gets dragged down, gets infinitely close, and we have, and I'm going to draw it in red, our tangent line to our curve at this point. And that's going to mean a lot to us this entire year. So a tangent line is a line tangent to a curve at the point. A normal line is a line perpendicular to our tangent line. So our next example where we're finding the slope of a curve at a given x value and then write the equation of the tangent line. So we're going to use that formula that I just came up with. The limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So bring down your limits. I want you to understand that this is a limit problem. bringing down our limit, and then multiplying all that out. OK, simplifying all that. The x squareds cancel, the 1 should cancel. And you should have stuff that cancels. Now notice how I can factor out an h, and I'm left with a 2x plus h on top, and then an h on the bottom that can also cancel. So now we now have that formula when I plug in 0 for h, x is some other variable. When I plug in 0 for h, I just get 2x. So this is the general equation for the slope of the curve at any x value. So this is for any x value. We specifically want to find this at negative 4. So I plug in negative 4. So our slope would be 2 times negative 4 which is negative 8. We have to evaluate the function at negative 4 to get our y value. So then we write the equation of our line 
just reviewing, I like to use point slope. So just rewriting out point slope. Y minus our function value was 17. Our slope was negative 8. So this here is the equation of the tangent line. Find the slope of the curve at any given x value and write the equation of the normal line. Well, this should hopefully look familiar to you guys. We just did essentially this example. Remember the slope of our tangent was equal to negative 8. So our perpendicular slope is 1 8. Remember the point on our curve was the point of negative 4 17. So again using point slope formula that's the equation of our line. Instantaneous rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change of a particle's position or the instantaneous rate of change of anything is given by a formula that's going to look super familiar to us. Limit as h goes to 0 of our function with our variable plus some h minus our function evaluated at that specific time all over h. So remember, instantaneous rate of change is essentially the same thing. This is the same thing as tangent to a curve. Okay, instantaneous rate of change is tangent to a curve at a specific time value t that they have to give us. So in this example, we need to find the instantaneous rate of change of the volume of a sphere with respect to the radius when our radius is 2 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to use our volume formula. Remember the volume, 4 thirds pi r cubed. So instead of r, instead of t or x, r is our variable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the limit as h goes to 0 of our volume formula so volume as a function of r plus some h some obscure h but h is going to go to 0 minus our volume formula at r all over h So I have 4 thirds pi r plus h cubed minus 4 thirds pi r cubed all over h. Now from here, this is just a lot of algebra. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out these 4 thirds, 4 pi over 3 essentially. I still have a limit. Factoring out the 4 thirds, multiplying out the r plus h cubed. Now this last part, I've pulled out this 4 thirds, that was up here, 4 thirds pi, so I'm just left with minus r cubed. And you know what? Let's not put that parenthesis in there because we factored that out. All over h. Now notice what cancels. The, eight, the r cubed, I apologize, should cancel. 
Notice now how each one of these terms inside here has an H with it. So I'm going to pull out one of those H's from each one since I have an H in the bottom that I can then cancel with. That should have been a squared there. So I pull that out. So now I'm looking for this limit as h goes to 0. h goes to 0 basically means those two terms go away. So we have 4 pi over 3 times by 3 r squared. The threes cancel, so we end up with 4 pi r squared. So that's, a, that's now the formula for the instantaneous rate of change at any point r, for any radius. I need to find this when r equals 2. So I have 4 pi 2 squared, so we get 16 pi. And it's hard for us to talk about units because they didn't give us units. So I did give us units in inches, but units are going to be a little bit chilling because I didn't give you guys enough info. And I, I'll know, I know that, and I'll tell you guys why that is a little bit later on. But for right now, there's just 16 pi. Please make sure your lesson summary is submitted on time.